what does it mean to be like Jesus? To be like Jesus means to accept ourselves to other believers. John the Baptist was not your average individual. He was an unexpected child. He lived in the wilderness, the other side of the tracks for that day. He wore strange clothing and ate strange food. He was pugnacious, even offensive at times, yet he helped launch Jesus' career. In return, Jesus had nothing but praise for him. If we want to be like Jesus, we must not pick and choose our brothers and sisters in God's family. We need to embrace other believers and demonstrate our unity in Christ, no matter how awkward or inconvenient. The heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us all heaven in one gift. The Savior's life and death and intercession, the ministry of angels, the pleading of the Spirit, the Father working above and through all, the unceasing interest of heavenly beings, all are enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. Oh, let us contemplate the amazing sacrifice that has been made for us. Let us try to appreciate the labor and energy that heaven is expending to reclaim the lost and bring them back to the Father's house. Faced with an outbreak of different, unique and multiple challenges in this life, people are asking one very vital and valid question. Why this Lord? And many have gone to their deathbed without any solution or glimpse of hope. Join Pastor Blessius Ruguri as he shares compelling answers from the Bible, the Word of God, words that will ignite to life vital gems of truth that offer hope, healing, and assurance of endless life in the presence of a loving and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Experience flames of gospel fire. We shall, we shall remain standing and offer a word of prayer. Kind and loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for this evening once again. We have gathered here to listen to your word. Father, may you bless us, bless all the congregations around the world, Father, viewing this message. And in a special way, Father, we commit your humble servant, Pastor Ruguri, who is going to deliver a message once again this evening. May you, Father, give us ears which can hear. Father, may we take your message. Father, bless all the congregations around the world and may all be saved. We ask through the humble name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. as 
Give them another good clap before they leave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all our audiences, wherever they are on the face of the earth for being here together with us who are here in Bunga Central SDA Church in Kampala, Uganda. It is such a privilege that we can join our hearts together in fellowship to share God's word and to try to penetrate some of those deep mysteries which the Holy Spirit would like to reveal to us. Things that are not just important for this life, but are also important for our destiny itself. I know last night, for those of, our, of you who were here and those who were viewing this broadcast from wherever you were, you kind of felt that we were dealing with a very touchy subject. But you see, life is like that. Life is not about soft things all the time. Tonight, I would like to do a follow-up or even a continuation of the subject that we had, and this is the subject of great delusion, great delusion. I would like to begin by letting you see where the great controversy that we are talking about, where it rotates around, the premise upon which this controversy between God the Creator and the archangel who became an enemy of his own creator, Lucifer, Satan, the dragon, the holy serpent. And where this great battle has placed us as human beings. I'll tell you there is not much 
excitement when you discuss this subject. This is a subject where you need to exercise your intellect very keenly and very carefully so that you understand the dynamics that are involved in this battle. It is very critical for each one of us to really understand how this battle is shaped and where it hinges. What is the fight about? And where or what is it built around? It is important for us to appreciate these facts because these are facts which the Bible has discussed very deeply, very carefully, and very extensively. Let me begin with reading for you a few verses of Scripture. And I want to begin with Genesis, the book of Genesis. This is the book of the beginnings. I want to begin with the book of Genesis, and I want you to see something in the book of Genesis, something simply stated, but very, very critical. Very, very critical. Just open with me in your Bible, Genesis chapter 2. And uh, I will read, beginning in verse 15, and just read a few verses down. It says, The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and care for it. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, let me just make a bit of commentary right there. God left no doubt in the mind of Hanum and Eve. It was so clearly stated that eat of every other tree in the garden except this one tree the tree of the knowledge of good and what? And if that one do not eat, because the day you will eat that one, <laughs> what did he say? You will surely die. I want you to underline the word surely. That is God using what you would call in our languages an adjective, an adjective, or an adverb, actually an adverb. That shows emphasis, meaning that there is no question that should linger in your mind if you eat that tree, you will surely die. And I like how he instructed them. There is a word that has been used there that he commanded them. He did not advise them. He commanded them. Do you know the difference between a command and an advice? I know these days we are misusing many words because uh, even the word advice these days can be a very strong word. I advise you not to touch my cup. Now, when some people tell you that one, don't take that one lightly if you want to continue your life. <laughs> you understand? But in the old English, the word command is much, much stronger than the word advice. So this is not an advice. This is not an advice. This is a command. Don't eat. Now, let me come to chapter 3. Please mark this, mark what we have read there, what God has said. That is God, and that is his position. And let's come to the same subject of this tree, and what would happen if 
by any accident you eat of it. And you are going to look at chapter 3. It's just the following verses. I wish the devil was even clever, a little cleverer. He could have waited a little longer so that this could come at least in chapter 7. Hmm? See how, how, how proud this guy called Satan can be. He follows immediately after God has issued his command. And then he follows. And I will read what happens after this. Beginning of verse 1, the scripture says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals. The Lord God... Oh, sorry, I didn't re read it very well. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say... You must not eat from any tree in the garden. Oh, so I'm not supposed to comment when I'm reading, but this is very interesting. Hmm? Where did he get that information from? <laughs> yeah? He must have his own Bible somewhere. Verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. This woman heard God very well. Huh? I think she has reported very accurately what God did and told them. But it's so interesting that sometimes hearing is not followed by doing. Then verse 4 says, You will not surely die. I need to drink some water after that one. <laughs> it's very interesting. If you knew how to read your Bibles, all of you by now would be shaking. Because now, the battle is beginning. Now those of you who don't know how this battle began, this is where it began. And up to today, this battle hinges and swings around what God said will happen, and should be, and must be, and what the devil comes around after God and says will not be. Up to today. God says, Ruguri, you are shot. <laughs> the devil comes after the coma. And he says, Ruguri, you are tall. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Now the issue now remains with Ruguri to believe who he wants and to believe what he thinks now is the truth. The problem with me is even if I believed I was tall, it will not change my stature. Will it change? It will not change. So the devil said, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. Now, from that time, the battle has ranged. And it is always between what God said and what the devil comes back and around to say. If you explore the way life is built, the whole structure of life, it is about those two issues in life. God says, don't 
eat snakes and the frogs and the dogs because they are unclean animals.